Hello and welcome to a guide on enhancements. Hopefully by the end of this video you will have a solid understanding on what enhancements are, how they are used, where to get them and how to build your character using this knowledge. This will be a fairly lengthy video so let's get started. First, what is an enhancement? Each power has an enhancement slot. As you level up you can choose to increase the amount of slots a power has up to a maximum of 6. These enhancements can do various things to a power, for example to reduce the amount of endurance it costs to use the power, or to increase the damage the power is dealt. The way we enhance our powers can define the build we are aiming towards and greatly differ you from another player with the same power sets. How we slot these enhancements is as follows. First look at your power tray. At the top there are several tabs. The third one along called enhancements. Click on this to open your enhancements tray. Then select manage. Here is where you can place enhancements simply by dragging them from the bottom to the desired power slot. There are various enhancement types that affect powers in different ways. These can be a bonus to control powers, reducing the endurance cost of a power, increasing the damage of a power and many more. To see which type you are able to slot on your powers, simply hover over a power. For this example we will use the power Death Shroud, which is an AoE aura that does shadow damage to any enemy close to you. You can see that under Allowed Enhancement it states that you can use Reduce Endurance Cost, Enhance Recharge Speed, Enhance Damage and Enhance Accuracy. And just under that, where it says Allowed Enhancement Set Categories, we can use Melee AoE Damage, Universal Damage Sets and Blaster Arch Types. If you are unsure about these enhancement sets, I will go into further detail on these later in the guide. The amount your enhancement affects your powers is limited, so don't just stick 6 slots of damage enhancements into one power, as it will be a waste of maximising your power's potential. As an example, we will use Death Shroud again. I have 4 single origin damage type enhancements ready to slot into the power. Each of these increases the power's damage by 30%. The first increases the damage by 30% as stated. The second also increases the damage by 30% as stated by the enhancement for a total of 60% damage increase. Now when we place the third one it only increases the damage by 28% for a total of 88% damage. And finally the fourth one only increases the damage by 10% for a total of 98% damage increase. So for each power there are thresholds that limit the amount you can enhance certain powers. There are a lot of different types of enhancements. The first are the legacy enhancements. Training Origin Enhancements shortened to TOs. These have been removed from Homecoming. Then there are Dual Origin Type Enhancements shortened to DOs. These require you to have one of two Origin Types to slot them into your powers. Then finally Single Origin Type Enhancements shortened to SOs. These are locked to a specific Origin Type to slot into your powers and more potent than DOs. All three of these legacy type enhancements only give a bonus to a single type. For example, either increasing damage or increasing accuracy. Next is the Hamadan Origin Types, shortens to HOs. These are found either by defeating Hamadan in the Hive or the Abyss, or you can get these as rewards for completing Miss Liberty or Lord Recluse's Task Force. There are another type in this category added by Homecoming called Desync Enhancements. These are gained by completing Dr. Aeon's Task Force. These two types of enhancements can affect multiple bonuses at once. Last up we have the main type of enhancements that will be used in this guide. That is Invention Origin Types. These are crafted 
and are not locked to any origin type. Many of these have set bonuses for using them into a single power. The set bonuses do not work across different powers and must be slotted into the same power for the effects of the set bonus. You can craft these by finding the recipes that drop from mobs or you can purchase them from the marketplace. There are various crafting stations found in the universities located at either Steel Canyon, Crotoa, Founders Falls and Cap a Diable. There are a series of tutorial missions for crafting IOs by either the Administrator Officer Lenk in Steel Canyon's University for Heroes or Dean John Yu at Cap a Diable for Villains. IOs can grant a single type bonus such as increasing damage or accuracy or doing several at once granting bonuses for sets as well. Now type slash AH in any zone to bring up the market board window. This does not work in instant zones such as missions, trials or supergroup bases. You can navigate to the enhancement section, then this gives you various options to search within. The first option is attuned enhancements. These are invention origin types. Once slotted, these retain the amount they enhance even as you level. There are some sets that are unique to attuned versions. For instance, each arch type has two sets locked for that certain arch type. The winter pack sets and the universal power sets are also examples that can only be found under the attuned enhancement section. You may be asking what exactly an attuned enhancement is. Unlike other enhancements that as you level become less effective, these do not. You will also keep set bonuses when you exemplar down unless you exemplar more than three levels below the minimum level of the set. The next section is crafted enhancements. These, like the first art invention type enhancements, the advantage of the crafted version is that you can use enhancement boosters to increase the effectiveness of the enhancements by up to 25%, whereas you're unable to do this with the tuned versions. The normal enhancements are dual origin types and single origin types. You can already buy these from various shops across Paragon City and Rogue Isles, although you can sometimes buy them cheaper here but I generally avoid using these types of origins when building my characters. The last section, Special Enhancements, is for the HO types or Hammerdon origin types. For managing enhancements while leveling, I will explain two ways, although I highly recommend the second way, as after a few ults, it will be a lot cheaper and easier. So the first way is to level using DOs or SOs. Now every couple of levels they will lose their effectiveness and need to be replaced or upgraded. An easy way to do this is to use the upgrade tool located at the bottom left of the enhancement management window shown here. This will upgrade your enhancements but obviously it will cost you and over a few ults this can be rather expensive. The second way is to buy cheap attune sets. For every enhancement type, there are a few really cheap sets. I will show a few examples here. These can be bought for between 200 and 500,000 influence, sometimes if you're patient, even cheaper. And if you buy the recipes and craft them, they are even cheaper still. These enhancements are attuned, so they won't lose their potency as you level. While leveling, you will gain free respecs. If you type forward slash respec, you will enable it and you can now respec your character. The good thing about doing this is now you can unslot all your attuned enhancements you used while leveling to 50 and keep them for your next ult with no cost. I find this way a lot easier and nice since once it's slotted, you don't have to worry about it. And in the long run, after a few ults, this can be way cheaper. As a final tip before we get into building a character, I just wanted to clarify something, and that is this text shown here. It states this enhancement's effective level is always the same as the user's, which I explained earlier. 
But the bit I wanted to clarify are these next two sentences, which state, in addition, its effectiveness will increase when the user levels up. The enhancement's effectiveness scales to level 30. What that means is that at lower levels, these are less potent, as shown here on a level 11 character. When you reach level 30, this potency will not increase any further as shown here on a level 50 character. It does not mean you won't get any bonuses affecting your powers past level 30. And finally, each IO set has a minimum level requirement as shown here on the last sentence. So make sure you're buying sets that you can slot or be aware you might not be able to use certain ones straight away until you reach a certain level. For this last section of the video, I will be using a third party tool called Mids Hero Builder. The link for the download will be in the description of this video. It's fun, helpful and easy to use. There is really no right or wrong way of doing it. Although I guess you could say there are less optimal builds than others, but it's down to preference mainly. The first thing I always decide on is what is the main goal of this build? To give me a direction when choosing certain powers and enhancements. For example, am I trying to focus solely on healing, survivability, damage, a mix of several different things like debuffs whilst the healing, while also having some form of survivability? And then within that survivability, what is the goal of that? Is it to stack up resistances to damage types or to a single damage type? Or maybe it's just to stack as much defense as possible. Again, it's really down to how you want to build your character. And one of the really unique features about this game is just how you can customize each character in such different ways. The goal for the build that I'll be using for this video was to have a decent amount of damage global recharge and resistance debuff capability. While this is a very end hungry build, I had to focus on recovery and some endurance reductions to maintain a healthy endurance pool. Okay, so for this portion of the video, as I said earlier, I'm just going to build um, a hero basically, and I'm gonna run through kind of like how I go through this process. So it might give you some tips and points for doing it yourself. Uh, but first I'll and also I'll kind of run a basic guide on how to use mids as I'm doing certain things um, all right this bit was probably quite long-winded and I might um, ramble a bit so sorry about that so first thing you want to do is obviously you want to select your archetype for this we're going to do a corruptor uh, I'm going to switch it to hero so you can switch between hero and villain here by simply clicking that we are going to pick obviously electric blast and sonic resonance this is actually I'm actually doing this build this is a build I've had for quite a while um, that I've kind of been modifying over time uh, this was actually one of the first characters I ever leveled on this server about four years ago and I've kind of just tweaked it slightly over the time as I've learned more and more about the game uh, and yeah, so let's get to it. So first thing we need to do is s select our powers basically So oh, We need to pick a secondary. That's my bad. We'll pick Sonic Siphon because it's very nice So generally what I try and do is get my main Abilities and then after that I, I like to get I know not everyone likes to get travel power, but I do like to get them and I'll give my reasoning for that a bit later on, but um, well, I might as well give it now. So my, my main reason for getting a travel power is because you can get a certain um, enhancement that gives you protection to knock back. Um, only by four points, but for most knockbacks, that's enough. So generally, I find it's just, you know, it's worth getting just, just as a token for that um, enhancement, if nothing else. And obviously having travel powers is handy anyway. So I'll select all my powers first. I get zap. So I've got my three main attacks, which is charge, bolt, lightning, bolt, and zap. Charge up, which is, you know, the main damage booster. 
my two main AoEs, which again, the reason I really like Electric Blast is because they're both kind of um, spherical around the target or around yourself. Uh, and a lot of the other blast powers either have a have a combo of a cone and an AOE, like, well, you know what I mean? A cone and then like a vicinity kind of spherical AOE. I don't really, I'm not a massive fan of Tesla Cage, to be honest, or Sonic Cage. Um, sometimes I do as a Corruptor, because uh, it's nice, especially if you're doing something like Hammerdon or something, uh, and you need someone to CC, and you've only got one person, and then you can help out with that. Uh, Sonic Repulsion. We are not there yet. Uh, Liquid Fire. And uh, yeah, I like Clarity's not bad. I say just just from terms of support, it's quite good. So I do like Sonic Resonance, but it's very endurance heavy. I mean, these two are nice, but obviously you can't do them on yourself, so it's very support with your team. Sonic Siphon's pretty decent because obviously it just gives you a straight minus resistance um, by 22.5%, which is fairly decent. Um, and that is the one of the main focuses of this build is minus resistance debuffs. So you can boost your team's damage by quite a bit. Um, and I'll show you how I do that with some extra enhancements as well. Um, so this, you basically put on a target one of your friend one of your teammates and it gives us a, a very small range but it's a it's an aoe basically around that target that gives a debuff by minus 22.5 percent resistance to all resistance though uh, this just gives you an aoe around yourself uh, that's quite large that gives you a bonus to all damage types except psionic uh, damage resistance sorry but psionic. Um, and obviously hold immobilize and disorientate, so mes effects. Sonic Repulsion. Now, I've seen a lot of people do certain things with this. You can actually change it from a knockback to a knockdown using um, a sudden acceleration, or you can use the universal damage one. Um, but generally, I don't do this. I've seen some people that just slap that on the tank. Uh, and just keep it up and obviously it just knocks down any target near the tank which can be handy but if you look at the endurance cost it's very very expensive so generally I keep it with the knockback because what I use it for is say a healer is being attacked or something you can just slap it on that healer for like 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds um, and then that just protects a healer or someone squishy um, the only shame is you can't do it on yourself because that would be extremely handy um, and then liquefy, which is a very long cooldown, but a very nice um, debuff effect. Again, this does knockback effect, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll change that to a knockdown. Um, it also gives a minus defense, minus to hit, um, and has a, a hold effect. So this is a very, very good little AoE to throw down. Um, and we'll work around the, the expensive and long um, recharge time for this which is five minutes without anything on. So we've got our main powers. Now we're gonna do our Epic Pool, which we're gonna go for Moo Mastery. To get the Charged Armor, because I, I like this because it gives you a lot of energy. So you get Smashing Lethal and Energy Resistance with this, uh, which are kind of the most, probably the three most common damage types generally in the game, depending on, unless you favor one mob or a lot, but. If you do a lot of mixed kind of content, you'll find that the three main damage types you'll um, go against. Uh, we will go for kick, so we can get tough and weave. Go for power sync. And last, we are going to go to the speed tree and get haste. So, we've selected all our powers now. And as you can see, uh, as we hover over each power, it gives us a choice to put some enhancements in. Now you'll see they have a little number over them. That is actually what level enhancements you're getting. So at level three, if you see, I get two enhancements at level three, and then at level five, I'll have another two. 
and level seven, you have another two. Um, so you can't just obviously like, I couldn't just, let's say I can only put three because you only get three at level 50 um, to actually place on haste. So you've got to be careful, especially with your last slots because you can't over um, slot them. But anyway, so first thing I do, as since I know this is a very end hungry build, the first thing I'm going to do is put an extra one on stamina and two more on health. I will go into that in a bit more detail. Because um, what I want to do is first I'm going to put my slots in. And again, this is something you will kind of get used to the more you build heroes is how many slots for what you're going to use. Um, so I don't need any more for Sonic Siphon because it's just a little debuff. So I don't really want to waste money on that. I'm going to fully use have six slots into lightning bolt because I'm going to have an arch type um, attuned invention set on that and the same with I can find it with zap here zap so they're both going to be maxed out uh, normally I don't always so on AoE sometimes I, I five slot them but on this case I'm actually going to max this because I want to put a certain debuff enhancement on that as well which we'll go into I'm going to four slot both the buffs because uh, we can put a resistance set in there which I will show you um, which is a little handy thing I always do okay so in my beginners guide I kind of glossed over this a little bit showing that I always get either combat jump or hover uh, and the reason for this is because it's very good as certain enhancements can be put into this uh, which I'll show you once I've slotted these so it's gonna quickly just do all the slots now and then we'll go through actually um, slotting them okay so now We've got our enhancements slots all placed. Um, and now it's time to actually start slotting some enhancements. Uh, so one handy thing I'll show you just before we go to that is here you can see the effects of powers. So by hovering over that, it will tell you kind of like the percentages what certain powers do. Um, so this just reduces their endurance by 7% or 35% there. Charge up, this gives you obviously a damage buff and it's a hit buff uh, as well as this giving straight up resistance and then here totals so this is the total amount of resistances I've got at the minute and the defense so by default I've only got 4.3% defense to all types of defense so defense is the enemy's chance to hit you and then resistance is how much of that damage you're going to take. So if you've got really high defense and no resistance, you might not ever get hit. But when you get hit, you get hit for a lot. Whereas you could have really low defense and super high resistances. So you get hit a lot, but you don't get hit for a lot. So it really determines on how you build your character in what way and what you focus on. A bit of both is always nice, I find rather than trying to focus too much on one or the other. Because um, sometimes you can go, go against certain mob types that will just reduce your defense to nothing. And then all your plus defenses aren't really that great in the end. And if you've got no resistance to back up, you become super squishy. Uh, it also states here your recovery. So that's your endurance regen. Uh, your health regen. The amount your endurance drains per second and it also shows your recovery per second so we get 2.1 endurance per second and we're draining 0.7 per second at the minute um, there's at a hit chance at endurance redux chance and our global recharge you can also click on view totals here and these will give you even more in-depth uh, look at some of the 
stats you will have. So if we go here, it gives you your overall damage at the minute, which is straight 100%, which just means you're dealing the damage at the minute. So anything, any set bonuses we get will increase that. Um, we've got our accuracy here. Our haste again, that's just the stock. We've got our run speed, fly speed, and jump speed here. And you can change that to something if, you know, what translates to you better. Uh, your status protection. So these are mes effects, basically. So protection, again, it kind of works like defense. This is the chance they would actually do the mes effect to you. And then this is your resistance to it, so how long it affects you. And then this is just your debuff resistance to certain types. Um, one other thing before we actually start slotting the powers is you can also see what your accolades would affect. So if you go through and get the stock accolades, so the, the four uh, passive stat ones, which I've done a guide for by the way, is Portal Jockey, Task Force Commander, the Atlas Medallion, and Freedom Phalanx Reserve. So we see here, you can also so now they're in effect, you can also disable and enable effects as at the minute combat jump is not active. Now if we wanted to actually see the effects of this and make it active, we click here and you see when that goes green that means it's active. Now it's deactivated, now it's activated and you see in totals that translates the effects of that. So again, fly is not active. And now if we look at our end drain, when I activate it, you can see there. So if I activate all our toggles, you will see just how end hungry this build is. So with all our, oh, we haven't even got sprint on yet. And also be careful when you're building certain things. So this is the Corruptor's Archetype skill, which is Scourge, which is chance to do double damage. By default, it's on. So if you look at the damage of your abilities with this on, you might think you're doing loads more than or like a defender, say. Um, but that's only because it gets doubled because of the Scourge effect. So it says 250 there on Thunderous Blast. And then we disable it, it goes to 166. Um, so I normally turn that off straight away. Uh, you want to check for other power, uh, other archetypes that have similar things um, and make sure that's turned off so you're not getting fooled by any numbers. Okay, so now you roughly know how mids kind of work. So let's start adding sets. So we're going to go through first and add some damage sets to our abilities. First off, we're going to look at these. So if you right click on an empty slot, you can see here there's little categories. Here's your single origin, dual origin, and training origin enhancements. Here's the invention origin standard sets, which just affect one, um, that just modify one type of power, one type of stat, hammered in origins, and then sets. Again, we're mainly focusing on sets on this build and generally I mainly use sets. Sometimes I will occasionally either use the single invention origin for just like a recharge bonus or if I've got the, the cash, I'll use a hammered in desync one. But generally, I will use the sets because even though the Hammered and Origin ones have some really high and potent increase in certain things, generally the set bonuses outweigh everything. Once you've got a full built Invention Origin out of complete sets, those set bonuses really make a difference. So what I will do is we're going to look at this now. Um, and I'm going to use the Snipping tool. Um, um, 
I'm going to use the snipping tool to snip this now. So without any enhancements, we can now see that, and we'll put this just here for now. Okay, so we right click on and we access the sets here at the top category. And then on the right hand side, there's more categories. So as stated earlier, certain powers can only slot certain enhancement types. So for this, we have range damage, we have endurance, uh, we have arch type unique sets, which there's only two, but there's two, there's the epic and then there's the non-epic version. And then there's the universal damage one, which you get from the sum summer black you get from the Summer Blockbuster trial. Okay, so the first set we're going to put in is the Superior Winter's Bite set. Uh, I like these sets, they're very pricey, but they're very good for building defenses. Um, so the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna slot five of these. We're not gonna have the chance for speed or recharge debuff on this. Um, so, so we've only got five slots with this. So, out of if we're looking at the set, uh, the entire set at the minute, I am going to probably leave the damage and accuracy off, and have the recharge and chance for hit. So, let's uh, go through this. So, I want them all, but the first one basically. So we slot all these in and now if we hover over it it will tell us what the effects of these enhancements are doing now you want to pay attention to the colors okay so we don't actually have a yellow at the minute but we have a green and red so as I said there's a certain amount of stats there's a certain amount enhancements can affect powers to a degree and then as it gets higher and closer to the threshold the potency wears off so once it's green that means there's a slight um, diminishing return of that so if I put any more accuracy on that now it won't actually affect it as much as the enhancements said it did after that it becomes yellow which is even less effective and then red which does very very small amounts Um, so next, we're going to go for our lightning bolt. So for this, I'm going to use my first scourging blast. So this is, the, sorry, the first arch type restricted set. So I, I like this one because it gives you a chance to do an AOE around you that gives endurance back, which is that one there. So I use all six of these because the set bonuses are really nice, to be honest, for these sets. It's very rare I ever do a build and I don't have both um, of these archetype only sets. In fact, I don't think I have a single hero that doesn't have, or hero or villain. Oh, sorry, this is, oh, I'll do that again. So as you can see, we get max endurance from the first two. We get 10% recharge, which is a lot. And that's global recharge, so that's all powers. For the first two slots added to this set, we get a 3.6% maximum endurance increase. For the third, we get 10% global recharge time increase. So that's for all powers. For the fourth, we get a 15% accuracy. For the fifth, we get a 4%, which is 0.7 endurance per second recovery increase. And then for the last, we get a 5% AOE defense increase and a 2.5 fire and cold defense. So it's a very good set. Now our first AOE. So for this, I am going to first add um, from the annihilation set 
the last one of these has a chance for resistance debuff by 12.5% and this has a maximum of 3.5 procs per minute. So this will literally, when you use it, has a chance to reduce their resistances by 12.5% and that's all resistances. There's a, there's a few other like this which will, you will see as I keep slotting them and it all adds up and can be very effective. Okay, so for this we're going to use our second Winter's set and these are the Superior Frozen Blast set. So I'm going to use all but the chance for this one. The chance for immobilization and the recharge is not that great for what I'm doing on this build. And as you can see, they are quite potent, these sets are. So the next damage one, we're going to start off with something similar to how we did the Ball of Lightning one. So we're going to go to the Fear of the Gladiator set here and we're going to add a chance for resistance debuff again. This one is by 20% as well with again 3.5 procs per minute. And we're also going to add another of the winter sets and this one we are going to actually have the chance because it's a knockdown which is quite quite good because this is a AOE around your character so you've got to physically run into the mobs um, and if you're quite squishy it can be dangerous so it's nice to have the knockdown so we're going to get all but the accuracy and damage for this because as you'll see once I've slotted all these everything's green so if I added the accuracy and damage well, the, the damage is red, so if I added the accuracy and damage, it wouldn't really be that effective. And I think, to be honest, pushing that recharge a bit higher and having that chance for knockdown is a bit more effective. But again, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. It's just down to preference. So next is a zap. So this is our next damage one coming up. And we're going to use our last... Um, archetype restricted set now this one just has a chance to do bonus damage I think it's fire or oh, negative energy but again this the set bonuses for this are really nice so we get a straight 3% hit point increase then a 10% range increase to all powers uh, this does not affect AoE effects though so if you've got a cone power or uh, an AOE around you, it will not increase the range of that, I believe. I guess we can literally just check that now. So if we go onto info and we hover over this, we see at the minute that the radius is 20 foot. And that is not green at the minute, which means there is no bonus effects. So if you hover over a power, Generally, if it's got anything in green, that means it's because it's being affected by some kind of a bonus. So the reason that's, even though there's nothing slotted in there, the reason that's green at the minute is because some of our set bonuses, like this one here, increase recharge. So that's why. So you can see even though this states that the range is increased by 10%, and if we look here, you see where the range is, 80 foot, in brackets, it's actually 88 feet now, which is 10%. So we know that this is affecting most of our powers, but when we go to Lightning Ball say, which is a 15 foot radius, that is not green, so that's not being affected by the enhancement. I don't think there's anything that affects AoE radius in this game. Um, so next we are going to go for Thunderous Blast. This is our big boomy move for 
uh, the electrical blast. Okay, so now I just want to add uh, a bit of info on these. So for certain sets, these are all attuned. So as I stated before, you cannot modify these with enhancement boosters. But this next set I'm doing, you can. So how do we do this and translate this to actually onto mids? So to actually boost the power using boosters on mids, we can use the plus and minus on our number pad. So if you see here, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and plus five. So now we can actually see how this affects fully boosted. And with these purple sets, these um, non-attuned ones, these actually act like attuned sets anyway. And so that is all our damage sets done. So that's all our damage enhancements done for now. Next we'll do charge up. So there's quite a good thing you can do with charge up. So charge up here, there's a set Gaussian synchronized fire control and the final one gives you a chance for build up. So when you use this, it gives you another damage increase. So if we go to here and we go on view totals, so we can see this here, we'll go to misc buffs. See that's on, let's just take this off for now. So you see that there is 214% when it's active. If I unslot that, it's 146. And then if we add it again, back to 214. Take it away. So this is adding about a 60% increase in damage and obviously you get to hit bonus from that. And this has a one proc per minute. So this can only proc once per minute. I actually like using the full set sometimes, especially on um, certain characters because if I get rid of that. I like the last set bonus of this because it gives you a 2.5% increase to melee, ranged and AOE damage. And then a subcategory of defense, it gives 1.25%. So that's the smashing, lethal, energy, negative, all them there. Um, so it's a very good uh, way just to give you a little extra kick off your defense. And if you can and if you've got the slots that you can sacrifice for this, it, I'd recommend doing this because it also gives you a faster recharge on your charge up. So you'll be able to use this more often. As you can see at the minute, this is 44 second recharge. And I can tell you by the end of um, slotting this entire build that will be reduced even more. So now we're going to move on to resistance and defense so first I'm going to do the defensive slots so we're going to look at this and how I use combat so normally I always either have two or three slots in combat training or hover it's very rare I don't go for the third so the first slot we use is a look of the gambler defense and increase global recharge speed. So this just gives us straight up plus 7.5% um, recharge time on your global recharge. So that's all powers. And also gives you a bonus of defense. So we're gonna plus five this and slot that there. Um, after this, we're going to add this here, which just gives you teleportation resistance. This this isn't really too important. It's more of a, a, a PvP thing, I guess, but like 
it's it's the plus five percent resistance to all resistances we're after here so we put that in and finally we go to kismic and we get a plus six accuracy and this just gives us a straight up plus six to hit for all powers which is very very good so if we come here you can see there let's just take charge up off six percent hit there next we are going to do weave so normally i again i'll put another defense and increase global recharge speed in here and then i'll add this scaling resist damage so this gives pretty much nothing at the start look so look at my resistance says it gives three percent but as you get damaged and your health goes down this effect increases up to a maximum of 10% resistance and then I normally just stick a defense in there okay so one thing I just want to go over I have spoke about this in I think it was my beginners guide or tips video and that's you can't have more than five of the same set bonus and that also applies for the increased global recharge speed of the look of the gambler unique here um, of the look of the gambler enhancement here so for example let's find a power with two of the same um, set bonuses so here we have a six percent fire and cold resistance um, bonus and here we also have a 6% fire and cold resistance bonus. Now this one here has the same again. So we can't have more of five of these effects before they don't affect us anymore. So if we had six of these, the sixth one wouldn't actually increase anything. So here we have a recovery that gives 2.5%. And then here we have a recovery of 4%. Now they both give a bonus to recovery, but the amount they give is different. So if I had five 4% increases to recovery, and then I slotted this and had the 2.5% recovery, that would still apply because it's a different set bonus technically, because it's a different amount. So you could only have five 2.5% set bonuses and five four percent uh, I hope I explained that in a way that makes sense um, so moving on to now resistances so the certain enhancements are just actually just going back I just want to go over so these three I would recommend to have on every single character pretty much you want either some kind of defense token you can add these three and ideally at least this scaling resistance one so you want on every tune you want to have at least four defense slots in something that you can add that 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 and that in um, and again it's not a bad thing if you've got more defense slots to add an extra um, look at the gambler I mean you can have up to five so if you can do that and you have some good abilities that you know recharge really benefits you know that that is a good way to go okay so we're moving on to resistances so first we're going to slot one of which I find to be the most so these first two I'm going to slot now are one of the most essential um, resistance enhancements you can get so this is in the steadfast protection set and this just gives a straight up bonus to resistance um, by 13%. That isn't great, but it's also handy at the same time. But the main thing we want this for is the plus 3% defense to all defense types. So if we're looking at the totals at the left side of the minute, we see once we click this, all the defense types get increased by 3%, which is huge. And then again, we're going to slot another one that pretty much does the same thing so it gives it's in the gladiators armors set which is again a pvp set and it gives teleportation protection but again we're not really after that what we want is the three percent defense it gives so we click that and again and these are 
permanent, so these are always on. Okay, so for the rest of this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a few more in this. Um, we're going to add the N resistance. Because, again, I need to try and reduce uh, the end drain as much as I can on this. And then we'll go for the... So if we look here and go on effects, oh sorry, info, we've managed to reduce the end cost to 0.22 endurance per second. And if you look to the right of that in brackets, that is what it is without any enhancements on. So it was originally 0.33. So we've, we've managed to save a third of the end cost it normally gives. And for the last one, we are going to add, because if you look at our, our resistances so far, even though we have got a few more sets to add, you can already see a weak spot starting to come through on this build. So if we come into the Impervium Armor set, this has a really good one in the last um, one in the set, which just gives a straight up 6% psionic resistance. Uh, and then for tough, we've got two more slots. So what we're actually going to do, because we're looking at smashing lethal damages, we want to get that to at least 50%. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, again, we want to... We want to reduce the amount of endurance as much as possible. So rather than just going straight resistance, we will do resist and endurance. So that goes from a 0.33 endurance per second to a 0.26. And finally, again, we're going to add another sonic resistance one, which gives us an extra 6% sonic resistance. So you can see we're starting to sort that out a bit. Now, negative and energy are a bit harder to uh, kind of get the resistance for, but um, we'll see how that goes and I'll I can already see that being the weak spot of this build. So next is the Sonic Dispersion. We're going to add the full set of this, so the Aegis set. Normally, so normally out of resistances, there's three I always slot no matter what. And that is the Steed Fast Protection with 3% defense, the Gladiator's Armor with the 3% defense, and then the third one I'd always slot is at least the last one in this, which is the psionic slash status, the psionic slash status resistance. Now this just gives a five percent psionic resistance bonus, and then it also gives a twenty percent to all mes resistances. So that's the time that the the mes effect affects you. So say you got slept for ten seconds, this would reduce that by two seconds. Um, and I'm actually going to add the entire set because this set bonus has a lot of defenses if you look at that. So the first one's movement speed, which is not great. Uh, the second one is 3.13% defense to fire and cold and a 1.56% um, defense to AoE. The, third, the fourth set gives smashing lethal resistance and the 5% mes protection then the fifth set gives you a 3.13% AOE defense and a 1.56 to fire and cold. And then the final one gives us further 4.5% to toxic and psionic resistances with a 7.5% mes resistance to all mes effects. Um, and also having this completely slotted as I have, if we look at the cost, so that would normally be 0.52 endurance per second, and we've managed to get that down to 0.3. So the next one we're going to add to is our Sonic Barrier and our Sonic Haven. 
Now the reason I've put four slots in these two is because if you look at the four set bonus of the Unbreakable Guard, it gives you a 3.13% melee defense and a 1.5% lethal and smashing defense. So if we go to totals, if you look at the minute, our lowest is melee damage. So this should at least address that a bit. So let's go, we're going to go with the resistance because this gives bonuses to resistance anyway. So we want to push that as much as possible. Um, so we just basically with this, we what we want to do is just add anything that increases the resistance. Because that's the main point of this power. It's not really end hungry and we're not really fussed about the recharge of it. Now, for certain builds, this is really good. And to be honest, I'm actually going to get it on this and just put it in that power there. So that just gives us a 7.5% increase to our maximum HP. Okay, so that's all our resistance is placed. Next, we're going to look at, we will do the liquefy first. So, this certain powers you can do certain things with. For this one, I'm going to use quite a lot of chance to do something. So first, we're going to add this. So remember what I spoke about earlier, about us trying to maximize um, resistance debuff to enemies. So, as a sonic resonance, I already have three means of reducing um, resistances. And if I went sonic assault, I'd have even more. But I do like electric um, blast a lot. So that's why I went for that over it. So first, we're going to go for the Achilles heel, chance for resist debuff, which gives a minus 20%. Next we are going to add chance for plus recharge so this gives quite a lot so it gives you a hundred percent global recharge increase but it only lasts for eight seconds oh five seconds sorry so it's short but it can help and as i say at the minute my, i do want to try and push the recharge a bit so we can get the um we can have this skill as often as possible. So next we're going to, because this is a knockback, which can be quite annoying in pies. So we're going to add the overwhelming force, which is a universal damage set from the summer blockbuster trial. Um, and we're going to add the overwhelming force damage chance for knockdown. And it changes the knockback to a knockdown. Um, there's also another one you can use for this, which is the Accelerated Force one, but this is a bit better, but you can only slot one of these. So if you have multiple powers with knockback that you want to set to knockdown, uh, then you can go to that and have up to five of them. And then finally, we want to use the Accuracy debuff sets, and we're going to use the Analyze Weakness. And we want all the recharge, basically, of these sets. So that one has recharge on this one has recharge on and the last one has recharge on so if we look at our info that used to be a five minute cooldown and we've managed to get to a minute and a half so far and that's without haste on so we'll come to that in a bit next I want to address the endurance problem so the reason I've got so many slots in health and two in stamina is because of this. So first we'll do the health ones. So you'll always have one slot in each of these that you that you should always put this in, which is the hit points. So this just gives you a chance and since it's a passive, this is always procking. So it can only proc three times per minute but it's always procking so it's so handy to have that extra 
you know, health and um, endurance just proccing. And same in the endurance, you want this chance for endurance proc. And it's going to happen one and a half times per minute. Uh, so after that, we're just going to slap this in, plus five it. And if you start looking at our endurance, um, our recovery, it's almost as much as our drain. Now we do have fly on, which we wouldn't have on all the time. And we also have, uh, what is it? Sonic repulsion, which we wouldn't have on all the time, but we'll come to that in a second. So let's finish off the health. So we've, at the minute we've got the pan panacea, hit points to endurance and the performance shifters in our stamina but we want more so to get that we're going to add this next so in the miracles set under healing you can get this recovery which just gives you a 15 percent increase on your recovery which equates to about 0.25 endurance per second and then finally, we're going to add this. So Numinia's Convalescence, Regeneration and Recovery. So this gives us a 20% regeneration and a 10% recovery. Add that in. And you see we're now on 3.6% recovery. Well, 3 point, sorry, 190% recovery, which is 3.6 endurance per second. Now we finally have tipped the scales on our end train. Um, which will be reduced even more as I keep going, you'll see. So next, we're going to go to fly. So the reason I always pick, well, nearly always pick a travel power, um, unless you're a brute tank scrapper or a sentinel or a stalker, which get auras that can give you knockback resistance. Um, if not, this is a very handy little tip to use. So in the universal travel powers sets, which is located here, there's one called Blessing of the Zephyr. Um, and if you click on that, there's one here that reduces the knockback. So it gives you knockback protection four points. Which most knockbacks that will cover there's, there are some edge cases you'll need eight or seven or something. But if you look from my charged um, on my charged armor with the gladiator's armor resistance, I actually have another free protection from knockback because of the third set. So combined, this character now has seven knockback protection. So if we go to totals on view totals here and go on status protection, you will see here knockback seven. So this character is pretty much covered for knockback. It would be very rare that I'd ever get knocked back on this character now. Um, so what we're going to do is now look at these last few abilities. So we'll go in order. So Sonic Siphon. What I'm actually going to do is add HO to this, a Hamadan Origin uh, desync one. Because this power does no damage. It just debuffs them but it also has to hit them. So the end cost isn't really that expensive, but we want to kind of reduce things when we can. And it already lasts 30 seconds, so the recharge doesn't have to be affected, so I'm not really bothered about increasing that. If we go to the desync ones here, at the bottom, is it the bottom one? I'm trying to find it now. Ah, yeah, it's the bottom left. So this one here, Accuracy Enhancement and End Mod Enhancement. And you can actually plus three these ones. So that gives us a 38.3% to Accuracy and Endurance Mod. Next, we're gonna do the Dispersion Field. So this is the one that does the AOE round um, a target of your choice, a teammate. Um, and just does minus resistance. For this, what I do, since it's such a, an expensive um, ability, as you can see at the minute, it's 0.5 with modification. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plus five 
um, an endurance reduction IO on there and we're going to do it again another plus five endurance reduction IO next is sonic repulsion now this I only use for very short bursts I'll never keep this permanently on but I will put a plus five um, endurance reduction for when it is on so most of the time I like to keep the toggles that I will be using on all the time on to see the end drain so since that won't be on all the time I'm going to drop that off and I'm also going to drop fly off because I probably won't be flying a lot in combat so if we go to totals now we can see our, our end drain cost is about 1.9 endurance per second and our regen is 3.6 that's a lot more manageable so next we've got the Volcanic Sentinel. So this can be quite pricey. So the first thing I'm going to do is plus five that to reduce the endurance. And what I want to, because if we're looking at this build, we can see negative and psionic is our lowest two, but negative is by far the lowest. Um, so if we're looking at different sets here, we want to be looking for something with an endurance, um, sorry, with a energy or negative and these come in pairs so it's normally fire and cold are a pair energy and negative are always a pair psionic and toxic are always a pair um, and smashing and lethal are always a pair you never you very rarely find anything apart from like the edge case um, ones that's like that one there that gives you psionic resistance on its own so although my energy resistance is already pretty high, um, we're going to use this one here, the two set bonus at the start for an extra 1.5% to energy and negative. And what we want is anything that reduces endurance. So that's damage and endurance. We go on that again. And endurance, damage and recharge. And that's pretty much reduced us now to 1.6. So that's managed to save us 0.3 endurance per second. And now we have one, two, three, four powers remaining. So the first one's clarity. Now this just reduces, um, this is an anti-mez protection basically. Um, we don't really need recharge time. I'm just gonna slap a, a boosted endurance recast because it's not really that expensive but every little helps when it's this end hungry this build and we want to okay so for this this drains endurance by how many targets are around it for a certain amount but it also needs to hit uh, and I would like to increase the accuracy as much as possible. So we're going to go for this accuracy in end mod um, desync HO and plus three that. So you can see we can use this every 50 seconds roundabout, and it gives us about 34 endurance per target, though that is. Um, so every 50 seconds is basically near guaranteed to give me four endurance <laughs> so for kick I will never really use kick the only reason I've had to get kick is so I can unlock tough and weave so I mean you can stick something in there if you want um, just f to, to feel complete so let's just uh, so I stick that there and then the final thing is haste so we're just gonna we just want recharge with this so we're going to plus five a recharge reduction IO in and followed by another recharge reduction IO. And you can see here that although this isn't that accurate because if we turn off this, you will see our totals is here. So this is with haste, without haste on, we're looking at global recharge is 45%. Okay, and then we add this on, which is only five seconds. It's on four, but it gives us a hundred percent. So currently, without that on, with haste on, we have a hundred and fifteen percent. But that's just not enough for perma haste. 
So that what that is, is the duration of haste is 120 seconds, so two minutes. But you can see the recharge currently is 144 seconds, which means there will be around 24 seconds of it not being active. And since it's not active, it's actually less than that because of the recharge bonus it gives. But outweighed by this, which gives us, it reduces it to 109, um, it's a bit closer. It's still not permahaste this build isn't, but it's not far off. Um, and that's generally it. So that's how I go about building a character. I hope you found this kind of useful. I'm sorry if I rambled a bit. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this useful, please consider hitting that like, maybe subscribe if you haven't yet, and even hit that bell icon for upcoming videos. If you have any tips or tricks or generally fun stuff you like to do with your builds, please share it in the comments. I love theory crafting in this game and I always like to see other ways people are doing things. Uh, take care and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. I'm Hextera and I'll see you later.